Are you ready for the next natural disaster or any other major calamity? Are you able to have clean running water when the power is out? Are you able to keep your family fed for an extended period of time without going to the store? Are you able to heat your home when the utilities aren't working? If you answered no to any of these questions, you need to come to the Sustainable Preparedness Expo on Sunday, May 15th at the Spokane County Fairgrounds in Spokane, Washington from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will be multiple seminar presentations on topics like disaster preparedness, wilderness survival, preparing for emergency medical and dental situations, water well hand pumps, fire management on the homestead, permaculture gardening to feed your family year-round, emergency communications, food preservation, making a living on your homestead, and many more practical sessions on preparing for whatever may come. Sign up for hands-on classes to learn emergency surtering, emergency dental procedures, and how to prepare a bug-out bag. In addition, there will be top-quality items available from dozens of vendors to assist you in meeting your preparation needs. We are bringing in expert presenters and vendors from around the country who will be able to answer your questions about preparedness. Admission is only $12 per person. Kids 12 and under are free. For more information, go to susprepexpo.com. That's S-U-S prepexpo.com. Come to the Spokane County Fairgrounds on Sunday, May 15th at 10 a.m. for the Sustainable Preparedness Expo, where you can learn the practice of perpetual preparedness. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here at Mountain Woman Radio. It is a beautiful sunny day here in northern Idaho, and we have another seven days of sun in the forecast, so I am super excited. I am a sunshine girl, as you all know, and it certainly empowers me, so just thankful for that. And I wanted to remind you guys to, for those of you that are in the Pacific Northwest, we will be in Spokane, Washington as a family on May 15th at the Sustainable Preparedness Expo, and I'm looking really forward to that. That'll be our first live uh, workshops and and I really look forward to being able to meet some of our audience and our listeners. So if you are in the area, you can find out more information at susprepexpo.com. And there's information on our website as well at treyerwilderness.com. So come on out and join us. Uh, we will have our booth set up with all of our handcrafted wares. The Mountain Man has been busy making all kinds of awesome new things that we're really excited to debut there. So come join us. And today I'm really excited to have a return guest and I know she will be a wealth of information for many of you right now, especially this time of year. But I have Mitzi Weinman joining me today. She is an author and speaker and you can find her at timefinder.net. And she is the author of It's About Time, Transforming Chaos into Calm from A to Z. And she is just, she's amazing. She's, a, I really, I am, I'm hooked to her because I am an organizational person and an organized person. And I'm always doing everything I can and learning everything I can to organize my time better. And she has been a wealth of information t- for me. So I'm always happy to have her on here. So Mitzi, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me on, Tammy. I'm so glad to be back. Awesome. Awesome. Well, for my audience members that haven't met you before, would you like to share a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, as you said, my name is Mitzi, and I have my own business, Time Finder, which I started well over 20 years ago. And I help people... I help people with their personal productivity, and I help people get 
get focused on getting their work done. I also help people see that they have more control over their day than they may think they have. Mm-hmm. And I started out, um, I started Time Finder, as I said, over 20 years ago. And before that, I worked for the Chicago Tribune. I was in sales. And I, when my job was eliminated, I wanted to go out on my own. And I kind of feel like I'm a pioneer in the home office because I've been doing this for so long. Mm-hmm. And I love working with folks and helping them, as I said, see that they really do have more control over their lives. And I'm not, many people may know if they're in my book, that I was not born organized. I, my father put a sign on my bedroom door that read, Cleanliness is next to godliness. Welcome to the gates of hell. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone, Mitzi. <laughs> no, I don't think so, but I was a procrastinator. And I really didn't, I didn't hang up my clothes, I didn't put things away, and it was, you know, I, I lived amongst the clutter. And I realized when I went off to school, went off to college, I went to University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, and then I transferred to Syracuse where I got my bachelor's degree, that there was a different way to approach my schoolwork, a different way to approach my, my stuff so that I could get a clean start. And that's really what I hope to help my clients do, have that clean start, because it really does energize when you kind of start anew and really feel kind of fresh. And I think that's what, what's really great about different times of year. We kind of feel like, oh, my gosh, like spring. It's time to do some spring cleaning. So um, it's, you know, I love what I do, and I, I really enjoy being able to speak to people and, and, and really help them. That's awesome. And it shows that you love what you do. And, and that is just half the battle is loving what we do. And so many people don't realize that they can love what they do as well by wrapping their heads around a couple new techniques that would get them more focused and more productive and not feeling so burdened by clutter. So I would love for you to share today about some of your spring cleaning tips because I think we could all use them right now. We're all coming out of the winter. We, we're all pushing through colds because of being cooped up all winter and, and this new fresh weather. It brings on that definitely that uh, mindset of wanting to clean and to garden and to do all that stuff. So if I would love for you to share some pointers for us. Sure. So a couple of things. Well, here's a quote. I love this quote. It's by Eleanor Brown. And the quote is, clutter is not just physical stuff. It's old ideas, toxic relationships, and bad habits. Clutter is anything that does not support your better self. Amen. That's an awesome quote. That's an awesome quote. It's a great quote because it's not only the physical clutter, but it's also some of the other clutter that we that we carry around with us. But let's start with like the physical clutter. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I th- that I find that overwhelms people is when they want to start to declutter and unclutter uh, a, a basement, a garage, uh, maybe it's a, a barn. I, I'm, I'm out. I'm from out east, outside of Boston. So not too many barns near me, but you know there are um, there are things, drawers, closet shelves, any of those things tend to overwhelm people. Okay. And one of the best ways to approach decluttering is to just pick one small area that you want to focus on, and not try to do it all, especially all at once. But pick one drawer, pick one shelf, pick. Of one area of surface clutter that might be in your kitchen or on a dining room table, and just even if it's all over, let's say a dining room table, focus on one corner yeah. and just um, block out a small amount of time to work on that one area. And then after you're done with that, block out another block of time for working on another area. You want to just try to make it not so overwhelming. Okay. And look at that space and decide, what do I want that drawer to be? What should this shelf really be holding? And work on making whatever it is functional. So, for example, if you've got a, a, a linen closet or, or a cabinet, 
you want the stuff that you use most often really in the front. And I know it sounds like really common sense, mm -hmm. but I see people having to reach way far back for the most important pot that they use. Yep. And they put it in the way far back because that's sort of where it fits best, but it's really not functional. So it then disrupts the whole drawer of other pots. Yep. So it's really looking at how do I make this practical in the way it's going to work and be functional for me. And it's just so taking those small areas and just working them, thinking it through first before you start ripping it apart. <laughs> yes, that's such good advice. And it's so common that we all do that. You know, I've our kitchen is not finished yet. So I am working with makeshift cupboards at the moment and... And I will be very thankful and very much celebrating when I have actual cupboards on my walls. So, but it's just those taking those tasks and breaking them down, like you said. And the benefit is when you see progress, it just inspires you to keep going. At least for me, it does. That's like total motivation. Well, what's interesting, too, like let's just say even with a, with a kitchen or some cabinets or whatever, just because that's how you organize it doesn't mean that's the way it should stay. Right. So... I remember that when we first moved into our house, we put our our drinking glasses and our coffee mugs in a different place than they are now, because after a while, it was you know it was really clear that this isn't making any sense. The drinking glasses should be near the, the refrigerator. The coffee mugs should be near the coffee pot. But when you're trying to just kind of put stuff away, sometimes you're not really thinking what. What, what makes sense, what's really functional. Okay. So, you know, sometimes you have to be open to just kind of reevaluate and change it around. And yes. So that it really does work and not just say, well, it's not working, but uh, I don't want to bother with it. Once yes. you bother with it, you're going to feel so much better. It's going to be like, oh, wow, this really does make a lot of sense. This is great. And it, it feels good. It does. It so does. And I did a video um, one time when I was in my kitchen and I was baking something and I was sharing, you know, organizational skills in the kitchen for those that are new to cooking in the kitchen because people don't realize that your setup really does matter and things being close at hand and not having to dig for them. And, and in those cases, the more you have to dig for them, the m less you want to be doing it. It, it makes it, it doesn't make it a fun time to be there when you have to work harder to do the things you do. And some people are subject to not liking change. My guys are, they don't like change a whole lot. Like if I rearrange in the house, it throws them off. So there have been times as I'm getting my kitchen in place, just as it is right now in the makeshift fashion, that things weren't working for me. So I would rearrange them, and I found they would get so disheveled. So now when I make a change, I walk them through and show them where I placed everything. Not that they're going to remember it, but <laughs> I at least make the attempt to share with them that I have moved things. Because it does throw things in an uproar sometimes for them, not for me. <laughs> But but that's a, you know that's something I've learned in my process of moving things and and also that you can work around people that don't necessarily like change. You just have to work your way through it. <laughs> exactly, and sometimes what can be really helpful is like if you're explaining change to to let's say that you move something around in the kitchen that way is explain sort of why you did it. Because, and when you start giving people the why and the understanding it kind of resonates more yeah. and so that can be really helpful if you're changing things around and um, you know for for example you know huge things that people have that they want to clean out and especially around this time where it's like um, you know just going through taxes and all of that is all that paper and the clutter that comes from the paper and so many times Actually, all the time when I'm working with clients and we're, we're looking at their clutter, it's working it out on paper first. Like, what are the file folders that they need? What you know, because we're still not paperless. But it's to figure it out on paper, on paper first. Ironically, um, what it is that they want from their the, the files and the folders and the paperwork that they keep. Right. How would it best be organized and what they don't really need to keep anymore. And when you start to figure it out first on paper, it helps then to 
make the process that much easier. But if you sit there and you start pulling apart file drawers of paper and folders and whatever, and you've got a big mess, what I've seen happen many times before someone's worked with me, they'll say, well, I had it all out, but then I had to stop, so I had to put it all back in the drawer. And they didn't make the progress because they didn't have a system, having thought through a system first before they actually take the papers and, and, and put them away. So yeah. it's thinking through what you want first and then looking to see how you can organize your, your drawers and the paper and all that as if it were um, a bookstore, right. like a, a Barnes & Noble or, or your you know local independent bookstore where, where the bookstores have topics, subjects, and then within the subjects, they have other subjects. So, you know, you have your history, you can have your American history, you can have your European history, your Asian history, and then within, let's say, American history, then you've got your your Revolutionary War, your Civil War, you know, unfortunately it seems to be wars, but, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you have them subcategorized, and that's right. exactly what you want to do with your papers. You want to have your, let's say, your finance you know, drawer for your finances, maybe a drawer for family or part of your drawer for your family, um, part of your drawer for insurance, and, you know, things like that. Yep. So that you're keeping the like things together, but not necessarily always have to alphabetize individual file folders. Yeah, very good advice. And you said about writing things down. You know, so many people are trying to go all digital, and I can raise my hand to that. There's a lot of ways in my life that I am going all digital, and it has helped me greatly. However, when it comes to brainstorming, whether it's one of my books or my garden or, you know, anything that I want to do in my office or home, I need to sit down and have it on paper, too, just because I, I'm a visual-minded person, and it gives me so much better clarity. And once you start writing and you see it, you know, you can really um, get a better picture and then really... Um, uh, take steps from there to even enhance what you're attempting to do. So I really find that it's just such a great way to brainstorm in, in anything. Absolutely. Uh, you know, paper, you know, environmentally speaking, maybe it is, but paper isn't really the enemy, right. uh, you know, in, in, in a way that you there's still ways to use paper and to embrace paper <laughs> and to, you know, artwork is on paper, you know, it's there's digital, but there's also cardboard things on paper, and it's cards. Yeah. We can have cards on paper. They don't all have to be digital. Right, exactly. And, and we can put them tactile, put them on our hands. You know, I was, uh, you know, I, I loved the fact that I actually, my book is a physical piece of, it's physical. I can open it up. I, I don't yeah. have to, you know, it's, it's in a Kindle, but it's also something that you can hold. and. Yeah. And it's good. Yep. And so knowing that, if you know, when you brainstorm, you're thinking things through, you're thinking through your system, your filing systems, your, even your, how you want to set up your kitchen. I always think it's when, when I'm working with people on organization and clutter in their offices, primarily in their offices, I always say, I want you to think about this ideally. Like if you were starting over and you, and you are actually having a new kitchen, so it kind of works for you. Right. <laughs> when, you when you're starting over, you, you want to organize it. I want you to think ideally, how would you set it up if you were given a new space, new office, empty file drawers? How would you set it up so that it would work for you this time around if it's not working for you? And when I talk about issues with time, I always tell people, real. I, we talk realistically. So clutter and organization, idealistically, time, realistically. Yep. Yep. That's so true. So, so true. And you know what, Mitzi? I'm going to just take a short break here to get some words in from our sponsors, and I'll, we'll jump right back and continue this conversation. So stay tuned. The new Pioneer Magazine, taking the skills and techniques of yesteryears and combining it with solar, hydroponics, and various other advancements of today, creating the most robust pioneering magazine on the market. In addition to the new Pioneer magazine, they also have available the American Frontiersman magazine, taking you back to a more primitive time, and both magazines can be found at newpioneermag.com. Get your copies today and be prepared for tomorrow. Do you have a loved one, or are you suffering from celiac disease or a gluten intolerance? Trying to find that perfect flour? Whether you are baking cookies, flaky pie crusts, or baking breads from scratch, or you are looking for a quick cake from a package, 
Look no further. Better Batter offers non-GMO gluten-free products with an assortment of packaged items as well as flour packaged in varying sizes, including their bulk sizes, perfect for those of you that are practicing your preparedness skills. Better Batter is not just another gluten-free flour. It's what you have been searching for. Visit BetterBetter.org. Do you have your free digital subscription to Prepare Magazine yet? If not, then hurry over to PrepareMag.com and start getting each monthly issue sent directly to your inbox. It's easy. All you have to do is go to PrepareMag.com, enter your name and email address, and you're subscribed. Consider signing up for the premium membership for past issues and exclusive resources. You can even subscribe to the beautiful print version of Prepare Magazine. Visit PrepareMag.com and choose the option that's most valuable to you. Prepare Magazine, encouraging, empowering, and enriching your journey. Okay, we are back, and again, we are speaking with Mitzi Weinman, and uh, if you're just joining in, she is a wealth of information on organization and time management, so we are talking about decluttering for spring, um, and just in general, even, um, to get clarity on our projects and and uh, better focus and productivity, so Mitzi, this has been great. I love what you're sharing so far, um, and, and, and even for those of you that refuse to do paper, that you want to focus on all the apps and all the, the um, eye jiggers, as my husband would call it, um, there are apps that you can do mind mapping, and it makes it really nice to be able to map out your projects that way if you are really trying to stay away from the pencil. But it's like Mitzi said, it's something about holding that book in your hand. Like It's even like sending a card. Most people send an email these days or a text message versus a actually a card that ends up in your mailbox. And, you know, it's stepping away from some of those traditional things and stepping into the electronic world, I think, sometimes complicates things and overwhelms people because there's so many options where if you just stick to the simple, it's so much easier. And, and that applies in so many different areas of our lives. I think many times we make things way more complicated than they need to be. Yep. And, you know, when I work with somebody and we're, we're talking about how to have a focused day, how to get their work done and not be distracted by the things that can commonly distract people like interruptions or pop-ups that appear on the computer screen or many, many other things that can uh, distract when I suggest to people that it's really all about planning your day, it's thinking through what need, what you really need to get done, when are you going to do it, not necessarily what time of the day you're going to do something, but what day are you going to do it, and really using some sort of a calendar or planner system to help with that, to be able to put it someplace, whether it's a paper system or it's electronic. But it's so funny because I've had many... I've had many clients say, you know, there's this app that I can do my to-do list in or whatever. I had a client yesterday who said, well, I have my t- my tasks in in Outlook, but, you know, Outlook doesn't prioritize them for me. <laughs> and, I said, <laughs> and I said, that's right. And I said, it doesn't prioritize them for you. I said, just like these apps, you cannot determine what you need to do. You have to put the information in, and <laughs> you have to make the decision on what is your priority. You can set up an app to say that, you know, my email is a high priority for me, and social media is next, and business development is, is, you know, like 20% of my time. You can put that information in, and it can kind of adjust your day, potentially. You know, some of these apps could say, you know, this is what you should be doing, working on, but you Sometimes there are things that happen in your day, like real world, real life, where <laughs> you have to make and change it. The app can't just spit it out for you. You have to take control over it. And it's just kind of, I just kind of chuckle a little bit inside, <laughs> and sometimes a little outside. You have to put the information into the app. You have to make the decision whether working on this project is more of a priority for you or responding to your manager is more of a priority in this yep. moment of time. <laughs> yep. You have to think. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny, and we have to be the ones that are in control of it. I mean, in order to stay productive and organized and on top of things, you really need to be the one in control and not letting all those little squirrels 
take take over your day and that can be really hard sometimes in this social media world like you're saying with things popping up on your screen and everything i was ve- i'm very blessed to have found a program that works really awesome for me and my audience has heard me talk about it before it's called nosebe it's n o z b e and you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com/nosebe but it is it is has saved my life cuz i can email um my actionable uh, e- emails right into there and give it a time and a date when it needs to be done, even give it an amount of time it will take so I can really track things. But again, like you said, you got to pay attention to it and you got to be the one in control of it. But what's nice with it also is that if you, because this is something that happens to me often, is I don't get everything done in a day that I have planned because of the squirrels and family and life and being sick and just all the craziness that goes on. So it easily allows you to move things from one day to the next and shuffle things around. So it has been such a godsend to me. That and Evernote have been such godsends for me in keeping myself organized. But like you said, it all depends on what you're using and what you, works for you. I have used a paper, like a day timer, since I was 18 and just stopped using that last year because there was too much and it wasn't working for me anymore, that I needed something yeah. that was more organized. And this is what the solution I found. But, but you know, it's, it's a personal preference. And, and the bigger thing, I think, is just staying in control of it and knowing that you're smarter than whatever it is that you're using. <laughs> exactly. And so when you were describing what it was, it was like you were putting in how long you thought it was going to take. You were putting in what it was that you needed to do. Yep. You were doing that entering, and that's, that's the, the key. It doesn't get entered for you, no. and so you are taking that control over it, yep. and you are really thinking it through and processing it, and and you have to be the one to do that. Yeah. And so it's really, it's, it's amazing when somebody thinks that the app will do it for them. The app's or the software, whatever it is that someone's using, they're meant to be su- to support right. and to allow you to look at things maybe in very, very various views. Right. And but it doesn't do it for you, and it still can do the work for you either. Right. So <laughs> we're not there yet. We don't have Rosie the robot doing it for us yet. So um, referencing the Jetsons. Yes. But, um, <laughs> but it's, it's that's great. One of the things, I don't know if you've, I've, this is one of the things, talking about, you know, not lose, you know, staying in control of your time. I don't know if you ever use this phrase, but I would, I would suggest that you, you and maybe your audience members delete it from your vocabulary, which is when you say to somebody, when do you need it by? Mm. When you say, when do you need it by to somebody, what is, hap- what's happening? Yeah. You're, you're creating a time slot and a, and a, you are, you're creating a time slot that they are dictating to you. Versus you so dictating you are, it to them. <laughs> so, right. So instead of saying, when do you need it by to somebody, what you want to do is say, um, if I got this to you by such and such a day, will that work? Then you can start a negotiation. But if you don't, if you start off saying, when do you need it by, you're handing the control over your, t- your, control over your time to somebody else. Very true. And we want to try to keep as much control as we can so it's really that's just one it's just like a just a simple little tip but uh but it works oh it yeah works because then you're maintaining control over your time saying i can do it on thursday will that work for you and someone can say nope that won't work and then you have a discussion about why you know whatever yeah. and you say okay well then how about monday you know whatever it is but yeah it's yeah just one small thing well, and that's good advice because in my situation with being ill and healing, I've really found that I have to guard my time. And, and you know, at first, when you start to wrap your head around that, you might feel selfish in doing that. But I learned that that was what I needed for my health and, and to be productive. I needed to guard my time and also focus for me on what was most important because I only I had very limited hours in the day that I was feeling well for a while. And I really needed, I wanted, I wanted to own those hours. And so I don't think that guarding our time is something that we should feel um, bad about. I think it's something that is very helpful in, in keeping us from saying yes when we should say no, you know, and, 
I think that's an important aspect. Well, that's, congratulations for doing that. That is so important, and I think so many people don't do that. I wrote a chapter on it in my book, Chapter V, for value your time. <laughs> yep. And, you know, we know people who value their own time, and we are we sometimes are hesitant to ask them to do something because we know they're they're really busy or they're, you know, they they do guard their time. They were we when we value our own time, we then start to respect our own time. Yeah. And then others start to respect it as well. And yeah. when you when you've got a, you know, when you're not feeling well or you've got illness or you've got somebody else that you're taking care of and I've lived through that yeah. in various ways as well that you really need to be then focused on what it is that you need to be able to get, what you can get done, and okay. what's important for you to get done. And sometimes that list is very small in a particular day. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's like one thing, or some days maybe it's not even that you can get to anything. And that's okay. Yeah. Understanding, but understanding that and saying, you know, it's all right, and valuing yourself and your time really is something that too many people just don't do not do and they stretch themselves so thin yep. and then other things end up suffering as well yep. and they're not giving their all to, not that you have to give your all to everything, but they're not even giving their best to, some, to many things. Right, right. I was and guilty then, of that. Yep. And it's not a matter of being selfish that if you, you know, it's that whole thing like the flight attendant you know, when they say to put the oxygen mask on, on your, oh. on yourself first. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you don't, and it just goes so against what we think if we're traveling, especially with a small child, it, it just goes against our instinct. Yep. But the idea is that if we don't take care of ourselves, yep. then we are no good to anybody else. Yep. And we need to be able to, to take care of ourselves to be able to take care of others or to be with others and to be the way we want to be with others. Yeah, no, that's so true. And that was something that I really focused on last year um, was just taking care of myself. I knew I was sick, but at the time didn't know what was going on, but really focused on being good to me so I could be better to others and, and lightening the load. And, and also, you know, we end up with so many irons in the fire sometimes that, like you said, we're not productive in any way. So when you pull back and simplify you know, you're so much more productive, you're so much more happy, and you end up being much more prosperous in whatever your endeavors are because you're more focused on what's important. So it's all a learning process, and we all have to go through it. It's just we all go through it at different times in our lives and, and so forth. For different reasons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, and it's, you know, and it, it truly is looking at kind of taking that step back and looking in and saying, okay, really where do I need to be focused yeah. and it's that whole you know the whole Stephen Covey thing with the rocks in the jar putting your big rocks in first yeah. which are your priorities yep. before the smaller rocks or the sand or the water yep. and understanding and knowing what those priorities are in your life and I think that it's that the the, um, the quote by Eleanor Brown that I you know I spoke of earlier, clutter is not just physical stuff, it's old ideas, toxic relationships, and bad habits. Yeah. Clutter is anything that does not support your better self. And it's looking and saying, okay, what are some of the other things cluttering my life right. and taking me away from the things that I really want to be doing or being with the people I want to be with? What are taking me away? From, what are those things taking me away from that? Yeah. And, and looking at ways to pull back and not feeling guilty. I always say guilt is wasted energy. Oh, yes. <laughs> because, yeah, unless yep. you've done something morally wrong and you've hurt somebody. Yep. Otherwise, guilt is wasted energy. And worry. Worry and, and fear. <laughs> exactly. Yep. And so it's, it's being really, it's, you know, you, you use the word selfish. It's really all about that self-care. Yeah. Because when you do that for yourself and you're taking, well, better care of yourself, you are better to everybody around you. Because yep. if you're not, you can get grumpy sometimes. Yep. You can get a yeah. little bit, you know, a little bit testy with people because oh, yeah. it's like you're being <laughs> pulled and pushed in so many different directions. You just kind of say, oh my gosh, yeah. stop. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're like I am, it just wears you totally down that there's nothing left. And, and the objective in life is to be present and to be able to enjoy it. So it, it, the more you let go and the less you worry, the more present you are. And of course, then again, the more productive you are. So it's, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it brings it, and it brings just, I mean, there's, there's happiness, but then there's joy. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and it's bringing more joy to yourself, and then it, that just emanates from you yep. to others that are in your presence, yep. whether it's physically in your presence or through your radio show, you know, yeah. through doing this, what you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so true. And, and you know, I, I always like to look at life, too, in that no matter what you're doing, you never realize the impact you have on other people um, around you. So I always am very concerned about um, how I affect other people around me. It's just something that that's just my mentality and my makeup, you know, and, and I, I am just perpetually happy. So and, and I try to share that with other people because... The world is an ugly place, and it's not kind for many. And you know, if you can, you know, pass it along. And when you're when you're happier and and more productive, and it's just kind, of, it's a it's a, a ripple effect, basically. That you're just you share, and I, that's my goal. <laughs> well, and I think you're meeting your goal. I think you're <laughs> Thank you. Your goal. Thank I, you. you know, it's um, I do, and it's, it's you know, I when I worked in an office, I remember that my my boss was not the happiest of people and unfortunately sometimes that toxicity in oh. somebody can kind of overshadow the happiness oh for sure and when you know when that person was not present in the office it was like a totally different place yep. and so part of it is and i've had to do this with some friends is recognizing those who are draining me of my energy yep. and my time you know my time and energy and needing to let it go, let yeah. them go, yep. and not in a mean way at all, but yeah. looking to say, okay, what's going to be better for me yeah. and for my family, and if I can be happier, I'm doing this right now with some obligations I have, I'm pulling back from some leadership roles that I have right now, yep. where I volunteer, yep. and I am going to be, on June 30th, not a leader and a volunteer anymore with that I've been doing for so, so many years yeah. because it's just come to a point where it's not making me happy. Yep. And and yep. I could see the difference. I think I mentioned to you, I choreographed my, the Needham High School. Needham is the town I live in. Yes. High School Musical. Yes. It brought me so much joy. Yes. And that sounded and so it, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it was yeah. just, you know, it's just the difference in, and it just really just really shined on how much the other stuff I was doing wasn't bringing me the joy. And it's so important to, to really pay attention to that. You know, we allow ourselves to just put ourselves in a hole sometimes, in a really negative hole, or we get into a valley and we don't really understand why we're there. And I, I can relate to what you're saying, too. I've recently had to, to uh, consider those things, too. And, and, you know, when you have you know, negativity breeds negativity, and I refuse to be around it because life is too short. I've been around it, and it's it's like you said, it's toxic and it's bile. And I try to stay around things that are positive to me, are joyful to me, and things that I enjoy. And also, we get so busy sometimes that we neglect to to give ourselves those freedoms and those joys. You know, for me right now, part of my detox is walking. And, and, um, I've been walking three to five miles every day if I can, our weather's been not cooperating, but when that doesn't work, I'll, I'll ride the stationary bike and read a book. And those things have brought back such peace for me because they're things I absolutely love to do, but I've, I've neglected myself because I've been putting other things and giving other things higher priority than I should have. And that should have been first. That and my time with God every morning is, is untouchable that and my family as well so you know you gotta it's like you said with the big rocks you gotta really prioritize and guard and protect what is important to you because you're allowed to <laughs> well and then the important thing is and what you're doing is you're walking the talk it's not just talking the talk it's walking the talk yeah and i i think too many times you know i hear the phrase work-life balance which i think is just silly yeah um <laughs> I, it, it's because work is part of life, 
life. So it's not, and it's not a balance either. Mm-mm. It's really what I think it, people are looking for is finding quality time, and yeah. it's quality time with could be with family or with friends or with yourself or doing certain activities, uh, you know, whatever. It's but it's finding that that quality time to be able to do those things that you want to be doing and not feeling pulled in so many different directions. Yep. And so what you're doing is so amazingly wonderful. And <laughs> you should be very proud of yourself for doing that. It feels good. It feels good. And I share it with other people because I want other people to realize that they were, they are in the shoes I was wearing before and you don't have to wear them. We, as a society, we feel like we've got to keep up and, you know, I don't keep up with the Joneses as far as what they have and what their house looks like, but I was keeping the pace. And you know what? That pace isn't something that's set by anybody other than ourselves. And we need to realize that we need to realize that we are in control, not only of our date book, but our pace and everything that happens to us. And unless we make a change, it's going to stay the way it is. So if you don't like what you're doing or what's going on in your life, you are the one who can change it. And I coined a, coined a phrase and a quote last year that the best parts of life are on the other side of our comfort zone. And I think that plays into this a little bit because our comfort zone keeps us from stepping out of making a business change or making a life change or focusing on our planner better or decluttering our home. You know, we, we allow ourselves to be stuck where we're at. And I truly believe that the best things in life are on the other side of our comfort zone because I've lived that. And it is awesome when you take that first step and everything starts to open up. It's just amazing. So I think that's very, very true. And it's a great, it's a great phrase. And, um, it's, that's wonderful. And going beyond our comfort zone because we're making changes. When we make our changes, we need to really make our changes, not only, actually doing them but really before we can even do them we have to we have to make the changes in our head and in our heart yep. to decide that those the, those there are things that we want to do differently and that sometimes it will take a little bit of time to get us into that place um i have a phrase like for parents i have you know i have a 16 year old mm-hmm. and i have a phrase that i use called i call it decaf parenting <laughs> and decaf parenting is really for parents to take a step back and buck the trend of yeah. their kids having to do and be everything and everywhere with so many sports and extracurricular activities. Yeah. It's to say, you know what, one sport a season is okay, yeah. or one musical instrument or one after-school lesson is okay. Yeah. You know, let's choose between gymnastics and dancing. We don't have to do both. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that you can pull back a bit and not feel like you have to keep up with everybody else who is doing so, have so many other activities. Yeah. And and so if you can be a decaf parent <laughs> and pull back and just kind of chillax a bit, then yeah. you know what? Your kids are going to be okay if they do one sport or even if they don't do a sport, but they do some club, they'll be fine. Yep. They're going to survive. They're going to be wonderful citizens of life. Yeah. And with, <laughs> okay they don't have to go to harvard they don't have to go to yale yep. or mit yep. you know what they're going to be fine if they go to a smaller school or a, you know not an ivy league school it's okay yep yep Yep. That's so true. That cool, That is going to stick with me now, the decaf parent. That is awesome. And that's so true because when my kids were little, I'd watch people and I'd be like, how in the world are they doing it? Watching them stress me out just and, and watching them interact with their children because when you've got too much on your plate and you're racing from one thing to the next, you're really not having fun. You're at your wit's end and it's just not pleasurable for you or your kids. So... You know, I think, I think that's such great advice, such, such great advice. And our kids are so different. I look at both my son and my husband. My husband is, has such an amazing mechanical mind that a college couldn't have touched. He, he, he's not a book person by any stretch of the word, but he, what he can do with his hands and what his mind is capable of just blows me away. So we're also different and that's what, that's what makes it neat. And that's also what makes us, us intertwine so well. That's so true. And it's, you know, you, you just, you capture, you know, you capture what's, what's good and comfortable 
people invest in people. And yeah. um, what was great, for example, like we're doing the choreography for the for the musical, uh, was that my son does lighting. So he was on the lighting board, and so we were working together, <laughs> spending time together, but not. Right. But we have a common common project that we were working on and just bringing us together in a really special way. Nice. And you, you find ways to be able to do that. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that you are constantly carpooling your kids and other kids and being you just, you know, it's like when you, you, you can turn, you can switch off, you can power down. Yep. It's okay. Yep. Yep. And it certainly is. And, and it doesn't matter what the rest of the world is doing. That's something that has been so awesome and unique for us is that we're back in. We don't go out much. And we've created our own little atmosphere, our, our own little lifestyle back in the woods. And you know what? It, it's great. And, and my son has done so good in having that environment. You know, nobody says we have to do the same thing the rest of society does. And that's something that, that we're really trying to push people out of the box and out of that mold because there's so much... You know, there's just so many neat things you can do in life that we don't have to follow that mold. <laughs> no, so I would I would ask your listen, you know, folks that are listening, to, to kind of think about something that is cluttering your life yeah. and draining your energy or your time that you really want to look at removing and and not family members, you know. <laughs> And those kinds of relationships, because sometimes you have to have them, but you can approach them a little bit differently. Sure. And and ask, you know, what can I, what can I do differently, or what can I take and out of my life that will enhance my life, yep. and make it that much better for me and my family, or just for me, depending on you know, people don't necessarily have family that are listening. Right. But what can make it better for me? Right. And and for those around me, and and take the challenge to to make some sort of small change. I, there's a phrase, I don't know who said it, but inch by inch, everything is a cinch. Yes. Yard by yard, everything is hard. Yep. So that's, one small thing. Yep. One small thing. That is great. And I'm going to give you all a challenge since Mitzi brought it up to choose something that you can adjust in your life. And if you are feeling bold, email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com and let me know what it is. And, and sometimes having a way of being accountable or letting people know that you're doing it makes it more real. And I would love for you to share that with me and I'll share them with Mitzi. And uh, I think that's a great thing because it's, it is a baby steps. It really is. Uh, I didn't get in where my mind is right now and in my mindset, you know, by just jumping. It was baby steps. I had to take that first step. And, and you all can do it. And you all will be so grateful you did because things will change. And, and, and you will enjoy life so much more. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now, we missed talking about one thing before we run out of time here, and I want to just give you the opportunity to mention it. You have your coaching exchange available to my guests as well as everyone out in the, in the world. Do you want to share some on that? Sure. The coaching exchange is really group coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with folks, and I do it by Skype so you don't have to be in Boston or in the area here. Awesome. But a group coaching is it's once a week meeting um, on the phone and with others, talking about your goals or some of your time struggles, time traps, things that you want to do differently or be able to deal with the distractions of your day. And we get on the phone and we work on specific things that you want to be working on. And you have the support of not only... Uh, the group, but of the of me as your as your coach, and it's meeting one, like it's once a week to join. It's for, it's a six week commitment, and it's it's something that can really be so so helpful having that accountability, like you had mentioned, and yeah. also the support. Yeah, awesome, awesome, and and you know I really feel very strongly about. Um, not necessarily self-help, but improving ourselves and, you know, spending a little money to 
better ourselves. I'm often taking different courses and classes to do that for myself or just taking time to read a lot of books. I'm, I'm a bookworm. I always have been. My mountain boy is. But to take time and to really um, learn things that will benefit me. And like I said, Mitzi's book has been a godsend to me. I've learned so much from her book. And I think that her uh, coaching exchange is a great way to take yourself a step further into productivity. And, and uh, of course, when you're more productive, you're more prosperous. So it kind of all goes hand in hand. But and uh, you can find Mitzi at timefinder.net. So if you are interested in her coaching exchange, there is information on her website about that as well. Correct, Mitzi? Correct. And also, if people want to receive my newsletter, uh, they can sign up on my uh, website as well. Awesome. And then they'll get 19 stress busters in their email about a day later. Awesome. Awesome. And it's very worth it. And I highly encourage you to check out her book if you are in need of little pointers and uh, looking to really get a handle on your, your time and your time management and decluttering. She is the one you want to go to. She is my go-to. <laughs> thank you. But Mitzi, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I would love if you wanted to share, you know, one bit of last bit of encouragement for my audience before we end the show. Sure. I think that, when you decide to make a change and to do something to improve yourself, as I said earlier, it comes from your head and from your heart. Yeah. And that there are, when you do that and you make that commitment to yourself, you are going to find the, that things are going to be so much better in a way that you want them to be better. Yeah. You'll be so much more productive. You will be happier. And it's not just productive because you're doing, doing, doing. Sometimes productivity is actually not doing anything at all <laughs> because you are able to nope. focus on the priorities at the right time and then the priority of maybe doing nothing and just relaxing and just being with people in the moment without thinking about all the things that you need to get done and trying to remember all the things that are in your head. It's getting it out of your head. It's getting into some kind of planner program or paper or whatever. It gets, just get it out of your head. And you can just de-stress and enjoy yourself. Such great advice. Such great advice. And I am actually going to add a tidbit of advice in there also because this is something that has helped me tremendously. In my Nosebe program, and again, it's N-O-Z-B-E, B as in boy, E as in Edward. Um, it's a great program, and what I do is I look at it at 7 o'clock at night before I go to bed to see if I need to shuffle anything and move anything around, see what's on my day, you know, my schedule for the next day. And then I evaluate it again in the morning um, because sometimes during the night I will wake up and God will prompt me to come up with all these other great things that I should be doing. So I record them because otherwise I can't sleep. And once I record them, I can go back to sleep. And that way in the morning, I'll wake up and just double check to see if I've added anything during the night because sometimes I don't remember. But it's good to do that and to be able to really have a handle on your schedule and really um, keep track of it. You know, so often we write and record things, but we don't pay attention to it. And my calendar is what is keeping my peace. So I, I guard my time and I guard my calendar. So it's just something that works for me. It may not work for you, but just some advice I thought I would share. <laughs> That's perfect. That's yeah. Perfect. It's it's just it's just baby steps, folks. And and Mitzi, thank you so very much for joining me today. This has been such this has been really wonderful. I've gained from you again as always. And um, I wish you the best with your coaching exchange. I may actually You're be listening you to up the Mountain that. Woman and, uh, Radio Show, and, where you will learn something you have new every week. New coming we up, hope you enjoyed uh, the, the show future, and you know encourage you, you to join us at trailwilderness.com. <laughs> And be sure to connect with us on You're iTunes. You're very welcome. Remember, well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope very you gained to us uh, as much and as I help did us reach more people and, just like uh, you. I wish you uh, the best, and I hope that you will be all sending me emails on what you're going to be attacking and changing and addressing in your schedule. And again, you can email me at survive at And until our next show, you guys take care.